what's going on guys welcome back and thanks for joining me once again today I wanted to do a really important video on the common faults and issues that you can find with the W204 C300 specifically the V6 models now I know there's a lot of videos out there that actually tell you all these things but they don't actually go in depth and break it down for you please be aware that even though I've experienced the problem, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will experience the problem. And I have to stress that the best way in order to avoid common issues and faults is preventative maintenance with constant checkups and making sure that you know what to check for. It's really important that if you really care about your car, make sure that you do regular checks on it, regular preventative maintenance and you probably won't experience most of the problems that other people are experiencing. Also, don't be a hoon and don't be a goose and go out there and drive your car like a spastic. Sorry, I'll correct myself there. Don't drive your car like an idiot, okay? If you drive your car like an idiot, then you're not taking care of your baby the way you should. Really, it all comes down to regular checks and preventative maintenance. That's the only way you can avoid common issues and faults within the C300. It doesn't matter what car you drive, preventative maintenance will always be a factor if you do it right and if you do your regular service intervals. Then your car will probably last as long as you want it to last. Now, European cars are, meant, are built to last up to 400, 500,000 kilometers. So getting back to the list, the first common fault and major common fault with the W204, and this actually applies to all models, is the ESL but this is something you cannot avoid one day your car is just going to stop working and when you put that key in there it's not going to work the EIS isn't going to read the key because the ESL has already malfunctioned now this is a catastrophic fault but as I explained in that video that I made it is only catastrophic to a certain extent if you're willing to take on the job and do the task then it's not so bad the only thing you can do is when the sign starts showing that your ESL is failing, then you have to get straight on it because don't wait until it fails completely. And there's also a little trick that you can actually uh, try. Uh, so in case you're stuck at a shopping center or wherever it may be, the mall or whatever, uh, you can actually try getting something that's a bit heavy, rubber on the ends, or you can get something that's like a hammer and you basically tap on the steering column right underneath the ESL and that can actually help free the motor up so it can spin one more rotation in order for it to unlock the ESL. Then you just simply have to get back home and get on it ASAP. And that's the only thing you can do. Number two, this is also another catastrophic fault that I've heard of, but I personally, for me, I haven't experienced it yet. So I wanted to uh, read this for you off a um, Australian car review site. Okay, so this is the VIM variable intake manifold it applies to the c280 and the c300s from 07 to 09 the w204 c280 and the 2010 to 2014 mercedes c300 vehicles the actuator cam for the variable intake manifold in the m272 v6 engine is susceptible to failure symptoms of a broken actuator cam can include rough idle loss of power, particularly at low and mid-range engine speeds, illumination of the check engine light, and diagnostic trouble codes that are P2004, P2005, P2006, P2187, and P2189. If your car is throwing these codes, or throwing the codes of, say, P2004, P2005, or any of these codes, and you, you clear the code and it keeps coming back, you really have to be aware that it may actually be the variable intake manifold. So please get that checked out. You have to get it straight to the mechanic because how it works is we have the these rods that work off the variable intake manifold and they actually open and close the your intake your intake and basically at low RPM it closes up that therefore giving you less air and at higher RPM it opens up and therefore flows more air through. So if for some reason your actuator your actuator uh, levers have malfunctioned you're not your car is going to close up and it's going to fail and eventually seize up the motor and blow the whole intake then you're going to have to replace the whole intake but luckily for us 
a few websites are actually selling it now where they're actually selling a billet CNC aircraft aluminium designed uh, plate where it hooks to the levers and therefore you can actually get a much stronger uh, uh, how can I say a much stronger uh, lever and therefore uh, it won't fail over time because the problem with Mercedes is even though you're buying a fifty to sixty thousand dollar car Mercedes have gone cheap on parts and they actually use plastic parts there and now as you know Mercedes have the one of the hottest running engines is which runs at about 80 to 100 degrees Celsius other cars actually only run at about 50 below or 60 70 maximum but I've seen all the Mercedes Benz even at the traffic lights they can actually go up to 100 anything over 100 then that's cause for concern okay and also just another little uh, a brief description on it due to the this is why the uh, the VIM uh, fails over time due to the due to the venting of oil from the PCV which is the positive crankcase ventilation which is also known as crankcase valve and etc system carbon deposits and can can accumulate on the swell flaps inside the variable intake manifold these carbon deposits increase resistance on the plastic actuator cam and this can cause it to break other parts can also fail as a result including the swell flaps the actuator mounting arms and the vacuum diaphragms Australian car reviews understands that the original equipment supplier for the intake manifold is Pierberg and that Mercedes Mercedes Benz repair involves replacing the entire intake manifold since they do not supply the, the replacement actuator cams. However, eeuroparts.com sell intake manifold repair kits and that replace the plastic actuator cam with a metal component and can be used for DIY repairs. However, the intake manifold also needs to be cleaned as part of any repair. For further information, blah blah blah. So, there you have it. The variable intake manifold is susceptible to failure, so you really have to keep be aware of that and make sure you keep an, keep an eye on it. Check your codes if your engine starts to run rough and you start throwing codes like the ones that I just said, P2004, P2005, P2006, P2187 and P2189. If you get those codes, get straight on it. And also, the next one is this here. This is the brake vacuum pump. Now, over time, what happens with this is, the seals actually start to give in. It will start to leak. Now, this isn't such a bad job to actually replace. I actually replaced mine myself. As you can see, I've got the part right here. And some people just replace the uh, rubber seals. But personally for me, I don't have time for that. If you want to do something right do it right and just replace the whole part and then keep this as a spare if you want however when you pull it out you must take note of how this is turned when you put it back together because it can only go in one way so therefore if you took it out like that then you have to make sure that you put the next one, your new part in that way or else it's not going to go in now I actually had to fiddle for a bit so that's how I got mine in. I just kept fiddling with it, turning it left and right, and then, you know, because I'm actually a DIYer. I'm not a professional mechanic. I do everything by myself, and I learn everything through the net, etc., YouTube, just like everybody else, which is why you guys are here today. So yeah, that's another fault, common issue with the W204. Also, the next one are the cam plugs for the crankcase the PCV cam plugs and the crankcase uh, cam plugs these plugs are actually located there's one located near this the brake vacuum pump and there's two located on this side of the engine so they're just little round uh, plastic caps that actually just push into the uh, engine block and over time they actually the seal the rubber the o-ring seal actually uh, starts to deteriorate and then it leaks so the best way for you to find out this is over time you'll actually start to smell oil burning from the engine and because it's a v6 there's an exhaust on both sides so the oil actually drips onto the exhaust and therefore creates a, a burning oil smell so if you start to get that burning oil smell make sure you check your cam plugs right away and also check your brake vacuum pump because that will also leak onto the exhaust and create that burning oil smell I had that for a while and I didn't know what it was and sometimes I get oil at the bottom of my car but now after replacing the brake vacuum pump 
I've had no problems at all. I, ha I haven't had to replace the uh, cam plugs yet, but I do have them on hand just in case it fails uh, soon. Also, next, because of the, the Mercedes runs at such a hot temperature, it, with hot temperature comes deterioration of rubber and plastic and seals. So, I mean, there's not much you can do about that because that's just how the Mercedes is run and that's how it operates. The only thing you can do is make sure you always check your hoses in the hottest part of the engine. So it's always on the other side of the intake. So the intake isn't as hot as the outlet where the exhaust is. So always check that side of the engine and make sure you're checking all the rubber hoses and all the plastic parts which is also why the variable intake manifold fails over time as well because due to that excessive heat and with oil it starts to deteriorate the plastics and the rubbers therefore creating uh, a failure and it can actually start to break the hoses making them very brittle so that way when you want to go change something and you actually yank on a hose too hard which is also why it's very important that when you're working on your car you're very gentle don't yank on hoses too hard make sure you know how to remove it before you just yank on it <clears throat> I guess and that's the best way to uh, look out for that issue next uh, the loud mirrors when I fold in my mirrors they make like a little motor noise like and then after that there's a whining noise like mm. now they are actually the side mirror motors I hope they're not malfunctioning but I can't be sure yet but I think it's also due to uh, just weather conditions and uh, when you get water in there and if you ever wax your car that can actually contribute to the motor not being lubricated as well anymore and therefore creating that noise but also you actually get the winding noise after the mirrors fold in. So they'll fold in completely, then you'll get the winding noise. So that might actually be the motor failing, but hope, fingers crossed, that's not actually happening. And well, there's not much you can do about that apart from actually just to replace the mirror assembly altogether. Next, the buttons that peel. Over time, and especially if you press the buttons with your nails, so for girls out there that like to use their, they have long nails, painted nails, etc., and you like to press the buttons with your nails, over time, it's probably the fastest way for you to, de to destroy the buttons on the W204. Why they made them out of rubber, I can understand. But also, they should have made them more sturdy. They should have made them uh, last longer. That way, even though you're pressing it over time, it won't just fall apart. Which is why I've optioned to replace them with the little adhesive stickers that stick over the button because actually on my driver side the unlock button actually has a chip a chip on the bottom left hand bottom right hand corner so i option to replace not replace them but to cover them up with the nice bling button covers so there's not much you can do about that apart from try to press it directly in the center and not on the edges therefore you won't create a rip because with heat rubber becomes very brittle and if you just press it on the corner it has more a chance of ripping off next is the smelly cabin filter slash aircon now for all w204s i've actually i actually experienced this when i first bought the car now i turned on the aircon because i wanted to test the aircon obviously make sure that it worked and this putrid smell came out even when i went to go test drive another mercedes w204 c280 there was this horrid smell coming out of the cabin. Now, some people actually have it all wrong, saying that it's all to do with the cabin filter. You are so wrong there. The cabin filter will, will collect the mold over time, and yes, it will become a factor. But the most important thing to remember here is that mold has actually started to form on your actual evaporative cooler. And that's why the smell is so intense, because when you turn on your aircon, all that mold that is stuck to your evaporative cooler is now just venting out to you and can actually make you pretty sick. So in order for me to rectify this, I actually replaced the cabin filter first and to my surprise, nothing changed. It was still letting off a horrid smell. And the only way I could rectify it was I used this, this thing called Glen 20 spray in Australia, which is the same thing as any antibacterial spray. And what I did was I sprayed it into the ventilating system below the windscreen and basically i turned on the cycle the cycling button for the aircon and i sprayed it in there and it took it through now a gimmick or not this thing actually helped to clear up the smell and now for the last six months to a year i haven't had one smell come out of my car so 
if this does happen to you and you start to get that smelly cabin, uh, smelly aircon uh, problem, then make sure you get an antibacterial spray that isn't really strong on chemicals because the last thing you want is to inhale too many chemicals. Or, but also make sure you change at the same time, make sure you change out your the cabin filter and also make sure you spray that uh, thing in the spray that antibacterial spray in the vents and let it go through the car and then come back out then also take down your your flap underneath your glove box or whichever side it is and you can actually get this spray some sprays where they have this attachment to it a long hose and you can actually put it through because the evaporative cooler is actually in the center of the dash so you actually have to put in your 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 attachment to your spray and then it actually sprays out this foam like spray if you can you get it straight onto the evaporative cooler and you start to spray so that the foam will cover the evaporative cooler and eat away all that mold and then you have to turn on the circulation for a bit and then it will help to clear up that mold but if you, I didn't actually have to do that all I did was I let off one of those air con bombs you can buy at most uh, stores and that did the job and then I also did that uh, antibacterial spray and I'm telling you it worked wonders I, I don't have the smell anymore and I'm so happy I don't because I'm telling you now it makes you very sick it gives you headaches and you can't def you can't have a, you can't drive longer than half an hour in the car if you have that mold problem okay and the next one is the parking lights when I first got this car these parking lights were susceptible to failure I'd have to keep replacing them and it was so annoying because it didn't matter if I bought high quality ones or cheap ones they would just not they wouldn't last over time personally for me I always replace them and it's such a pain in the ass because I don't know what it is I can't understand why but the only solution I found is to actually replace them there's not much you can do with preventative maintenance and personally I don't know why Mercedes have option to put four parking lights why don't you just use two like every other car Mercedes that's just a pain in the ass now you've got to change four every time or at least one on one side or you know how it is and the next one is the rattles in the rear deck if you're like me and you have the uh, the Harman Kardon system with the standard subby in the rear deck the rear deck shakes so much due to how the the cover connects it's actually a very flimsy connection and so that's what creates that rattling noise every time the subby goes off or every time you're blasting music too loud or if you have a subby like I do now that rattle gets so intense you actually can hear it and listen the only thing you can do about that is to actually put sound deadeners or you can actually put rubber seals where it connects that way the rubber can stop it from vibrating together because if you've ever looked at the rear deck it's actually like just very thin it feels like very thin cardboard material so it actually it rattles together because it's hitting each other every time the subby goes off it's going thrr, 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 and that's how you get that rattling noise now they're common this is so common in w204s most people know that if you have a w204 and you have the subby or the standard subby or if you blast your music too loud most likely you're going to hear that rattle and it's just so annoying so please be aware of that also Next is the battery drainage. Oh my god. One time I was just changing the parking lights. I left them on so I could test the parking lights as I put them in. And what do you know? Over like an hour or 45 minutes to an hour, the battery had already drained. Now, I don't know what it is about the Mercedes W204, but it actually they actually have a very big battery. I think it's like a 750 amp battery and this thing is massive so I don't know how the Mercedes can drain it out so bad but in my experience I've noticed that Mercedes like to have a lot of constant power still running in the car so when you test fuses and when you open doors and close doors your radio still works to a certain extent and there is a shutoff point but I believe that shutoff point is actually at the bare minimum of what your car needs in order to, to start again so Let's say, for instance, your car needs 11.8 volts to start. The battery might drain out to probably 11.8 exactly. And then when you go to start the car, if for whatever reason you have your radio on or your sub is going off and you crank it, that little bit that it's missing is enough for it to just not start. I've had this problem a lot, which is also why I've installed a battery tender. So every time I feel like my car isn't starting properly, I can use a... 
a UV solar panel to charge it if I'm leaving it somewhere and I'll just let that UV solar panel charge it battery enough so that it will start once I uh, jump in the car and crank it again but you can also carry with you this this is something that I sh that I swear by always carry with you a jump starter not the cables but the actual the little portable jump starters these things are amazing I actually have one that they rated at 58,000 uh, milliamps and this thing jumps my v6 like it's nothing and it will jump it at least four times before it needs to charge up again so that's absolutely amazing and that's with the battery completely dead this thing is so powerful it has so much put, like current in it when you go to start your car it's amazing last but not least this is something else that I've also had a problem with so the reason why I started my YouTube channel is because I actually had a little incident with my car and I actually hit the back of somebody therefore I had to replace my whole front bar my grill my side brackets the lights I had to replace all of that and that's actually how I started to teach myself how to DIY at home I didn't want to get go to the panel beaters and get raped so all I did was I took off the panel myself and I took it to them to spray and to my surprise it actually saved me well over ten thousand dollars because I sourced out all the parts myself and I did everything myself from pulling out the light the headlight brackets and you know pulling off the front bar and believe me there was no chance I was ever going to touch my Mercedes Benz and even try that stuff the last thing I wanted was for my car to be not perfect so but I decided to bite the bullet and told myself you know what I can do this I had a little bit of faith in myself gave myself that push and with all my determination and all my stress that was building from just leaving my car and making and, and just being devastated from it being all, like crashed up I decided to take on the task and what do you know to this day it is beautiful all over again I mean I, this this thing is so beautiful right now that I can't believe that I actually did all of this myself from removing the front bar removing the headlights and then replacing the headlights and you know just replacing the headlight brackets I even had to replace the front support bar but the thing I noticed was and this is really important that even though I hit the front support bar there's actually two airbag sensors on each side that should have shook the sensor enough for the airbag to deploy and mind you it was the factory steering wheel I had at the time and the airbags did not deploy now I don't know whether you actually have to hit the center the the, the center exactly on it but I know that I bent my reinforcement bar pretty bad like it was like this pretty much guys it was pretty much like that and then it went back out and I replaced that and I even had to replace the the two support frames that come off the chassis and I had to replace them as well left and right so that it was straight again and the, so that my support bar would be straight again and I tell you what my airbag didn't deploy so you guys have to be very careful of that and I don't know how you could actually uh, maintain that but it's also a common issue with the W204 is that sometimes the airbags won't deploy on for you even though you get into an accident sometimes things like that you there's not much you can do to uh, to uh, maintain it or to check it up I mean it involves a lot of work I mean you got to make sure your sensors work so you have to rip off your front bar test the sensors make sure they're getting 12 volt current into them because as, as we all know cars run off 12 volt power these are the things that I wanted to share with you guys the common faults and issues with the W204 C300 specifically mine is a 20 2010 model but it does apply to all the C280s and uh, some of the C350s but however I do know that the 2007 and the 2000 from 2007 to 2009 have more issues and this is the updated model of the pre facelift so it's 2010 before they actually just came out with the facelift model with the new headlights and and so forth and that's it for this video guys I just wanted to share with you guys all these common faults that I've experienced and ones that I haven't like the intake manifold but in the end it's very important that we all regularly service our cars 
do regular checks. Sometimes, may, sometimes you may have to go to actual Mercedes, but I'm telling you now, even Mercedes don't even do the preventative maintenance that well. They don't do the regular checks that well either. They just simply want to get you in and get you out. Even under warranty, your car is nothing to them. All they care about is throwing parts of the car, hoping to solve the issue, and then giving you a bill that will cost you an arm and a leg. So one thing that is important is always get your extended warranty. If you're buying your car from a secondhand dealership, then make sure you get that warranty. I mean, I bought five years warranty on this car. So, you know, it's just a tip for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I mean, you know, these are the things that are really important to me. So I wanted to share it with you guys and hopefully you guys will uh, uh, make better choices and uh, service your car regularly and hopefully this video also helps you uh, figure out whether or not you're willing to buy a Mercedes-Benz C300. I hope this video helps you out. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up and remember as always, please like, share, subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.